Frostpunk 2 is out! And Sapphire's got a Frostpunk 2 edition card? 7700 XT, 12 gigs of VRAM? Well, that's worth a look, and that's worth a build, and a Fractal ERA 2, the ERA 2. With our Phantom Gaming B650 ITX, and our Cooler Master V850 SFX Gold power supply, and a 240mm AIO, and 7800X3D. Yeah, let's get building! If you've never heard of Frostpunk, think SimCity meets Faustian Bargains. So it's SimCity, but you have to keep your population from freezing to death, and you might have to make questionable moral decisions like, Grandma can't work the mines anymore, she's just gonna have to be buried outside because we don't have the resources to bury her, and she's not gonna decompose in the snow anyway. So if our awful situation improves, perhaps we can give her a proper burial at some point in the future. Alright, first up, let's take a close look at our Sapphire 7700 XT. I'm doing a little bit of a promo slash giveaway. I'm gonna give away this card, I think, pretty sure, to one of our community members on the forum. Bad news, you already have to have had a forum account before now and participated in the community in some meaningful way. That really narrows it down. But, hey, come hang out, join us, whatever. Dual 8-pin power, cool Frostpunk 2 artwork, literally says FP2 on the fans. Okay, spoiler alert, it's a Sapphire 7700 XT. It is literally just the Sapphire 7700 XT. Same dual display port, same dual HDMI, same two and a half slot, three slot basically, card design, recommended 700 watt power supply if you're gonna get this as part of an upgrade. AMD Hyper RX, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3, 12 gigs of VRAM, and let me tell you, it does actually work really well. But, we need to put that in here in our era 2 if you didn't see the era 2 video you should check it out it's a blue case this is the <laughs> this is <laughs> this is this version of the case which you know frostpunk huh uh frostpunk blue it's frosty with the wood accents i put that on backwards what's not to love and the 7800 x3d currently still the best gaming cpu that you can buy at least until the 9800 x3d comes out or whatever intel's work on i don't know i guess we'll see and our 850 watt power supply and ah you know the build part of this really not super interesting the b650e phantom gaming itx i got this just because it was cheap so what do you get in the box well obviously you get the card but you also get your anti-sag retention bracket the game code for Frostpunk 2, yes, the Frostpunk edition of the game comes with Frostpunk 2, as well as some Frostpunk 2 keycaps. Guys, I, I, I don't know if you knew this, but I, I already had some caps that say F and P and 2, although not in this font, I suppose, and some handy gold Frostpunk pins. Let's put a pin in that and get to the benchmarks. Now, obviously for this video, since Frostpunk is launching today, I might live stream it later on Twitch, I don't know, we'll see. I can't benchmark Frostpunk 2, but I can benchmark Frostpunk. Now the advertised boost clock for this card is 2584, but I let Adrenaline do its magic with this card and I was seeing a max boost clock of 2657. It's very, very impressive. As we go through the rest of our game benchmarks, this slots in right where you'd expect for a 7700 XT and is a little bit better than the reference 7700 XT that AMD sent me when the 7700 XT launched. At 1080p, Counter-Strike 2 on low, 415 FPS, F1 2023, 234. <laughs> That's the Canada map with the wet settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider on high, 217 FPS. Ashes of the Singularity, GPU focused, high, 173 FPS. Frostpunk on high, you know, 173 FPS is pretty good, and Assassin's Creed's Mirage is 152 FPS. If you're gonna get a 12 gig GPU, put the VRAM to use. Higher visual fidelity settings, and maybe lower resolutions, or use FSR3. FSR3 will take your 1440p image and upscale it to 4K, or take your 1080p image and upscale it to 1440p. This system also pairs really nicely with the Pixio OLED 2560 by 1440, which is currently the most economical 1440p monitor that you can get. Although for just about $300 more, you could get an OLED TV and do HDMI, which is what I did for years. And I've basically been happy with that. Of course, now there's more expensive OLED monitors as well that are uh, more than $1,000, but not $3,000 that they were last year. So the price of OLED monitors is changing rapidly. And that also means that VA and IPS panels, which are modern, high-performance panels, are coming way down in price, two, $300 for a 1440p monitor. And 1440p with this card 
is a pretty good pairing in most AAA titles, and especially in esports titles. I mean, you'll be able to run at native resolution on your monitor pretty easily, I think. Uh, AMD GPUs right now are the price to performance leaders overall for gaming GPUs. <laughs> They're not the incumbent market dominator, but they will give you a good gaming experience with pretty solid drivers, with a consistent execution on providing solid drivers for at least the last couple of years. It's very nice to see. Don't want to rock the boat too much, you know, uh, on the bleeding edge for the latest and greatest pushing the envelope GPU drivers. I don't want to jinx this, in other words, but they've been really, really impressive the last couple of years, and I run a 7900 XTX in my home system, so there you go. Oh, and I almost forgot. That forum thread linked below, comment if you would like to, uh, you know, and I'll just randomly choose. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you later.